most of the Indian companies that we've spoken to have talked about the IT budgets being largely flat to an upward bias for this year. Is that your take as well? It's an average because we have customers that are daring and will expand and some other, notably the public sector, and public sector because of the sovereign debt, they are very prudent about uh, what they can spend. So I see, I frankly see customers that want to spend a high single digit, if not double digit budget. But I see some other they feel completely constrained and freeze everything. So the question will be, the winner will be the one, the nimble one that will address the 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 good customer. And just yeah. it's it's not a, an average overall good market. It's a market with good pockets and sad pockets. And the question is, we'll all have to be nimble and, and move and, and dynamic. But on an average, how much do you expect budgets to go up? Uh, if you look at the, the, the market analyst or the bank, they do survey. Today, they expect uh, IT spend to grow between 2 and 4%. My view with the confidence I feel, they will, these figures will be slightly re-evaluated upward. Uh, personally, I would be a little more optimistic than that. And also in terms of the verticals in India that you'll be focusing on, you talked about the public sector being a large spender. So how are you going to go about you know, tapping the India story? We started a domestic market strategy. We started, frankly, in the commercial market okay. and, and notably with our reputation and strength in the ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning Project. We now try to address a little bit the public sector. So we have some bids ongoing. You mentioned the identity program, but there we have a few other and we'll, we'll try to be acknowledged as one of the provider of uh, the Indian government or the Indian states. Uh, uh, I will uh, tomorrow uh, go with the head of the Indian domestic market, go and visit some customers here. Uh, uh, it's growing nicely, and but it's for us it's a start. Uh, we started recently uh, around 1,000 people, so we are small compared to the big player, but we grow fast, we grow fast. Okay, what is the growth rate you're expecting to see from the India business? Uh, 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 from a small base? I know, I know, but I would say uh, um, uh, I will uh, challenge a friend here, an internal friend, because he told me I will triple uh, uh, in one year, and when he offered me a budget, he only proposed 40% increase. So I hope he will beat his budget. I don't expect him to triple that fast. But I would say uh, uh, we should beat certainly the 40% mark. I don't think we are able to double in one year, but I'd like us to grow certainly more than 50% a year. Okay. Also, another word that emerges during uh, all this um, outsourcing is the uh, protectionism rhetoric. What is it looking like right now in Europe? Are we seeing more protectionist measures? There are tensions and there are fears. So just why I, I've been extremely vocal uh, in Europe and in France saying, uh, Capgemini, we grow massively Indian headcount, but we do not shrink onshore. We manage to a careful portfolio policy. We are managed to grow in France, to grow in, in Holland. So, of course, we grow 1, 2, 3 percent, where we grow 30 percent in India. But it is important, and I went and, and uh, uh, had a, a long discussion with our, the Group Worker Council to show them that our Indian strategy is a strategy that will help us gain market share, but it is not done at the expense of our onshore headcount and operation. But to do that, I have to specialize them to different markets. and They, they will not do the same thing. If I want to protect their jobs, I have to reskill them to some offerings just take an example, Capgemini had exited the defense market in 92. We had sold our business there. We have re-entered defense so that we can risk in people and send them there because that is still quite protectionist and, and local. So a policy where we try to address the fears and the protectionists by showing we grow massively in India, but it is not against and at the expense of onshore talent that we can keep and 
develop further on new markets. But are governments looking to increase the protectionist measures, especially in I, Europe? No, I, I mean, uh, P, I mean, it's, it's a little tricky because as everybody understands that India or China will be uh, the new giants of the economy, people don't want to antagonize them with two official protectionist measures, but you feel there is an overall concern and people, the people are careful. So, sure. so, so it's more a creeping mindset. I don't think we will see many uh, uh, big official protectionist measures. But I'd say we have to explain, and I think uh, we can do that together, and I know some Indian colleagues that do that, that the Indian growth is not against the, the Western country. It brings something to a Western customer, and we invest in the talent in Europe. Okay. Also, acquisitions have remained part of your strategy. Are you looking at acquisitions in India or elsewhere? Um, I mean, what would be your strategic fit? Uh, in, we don't look at acquisition just to gain volume and, and market share. It's more, we constantly look at the Indian market in terms of could we acquire something if they bring us skills that we don't have to accelerate a new policy, a new strategy. So I had discussion these last day about what I call the Indian gazelle. I mean, are they interesting company that if they join the group, we could, could give them a big scale-up impact in terms of access to a, a global customer base, and they would enrich us. So you understand? You will not see big things. We are not on the hunt trying to chase big elephants. It's more 30,000 people. We would welcome small things that would add uh, uh, new arrows uh, uh, to our shiva so that we, 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 we just add more skills. So constantly looking at the market. So you are on the hunt for smaller Indian companies? Small, innovative Indian companies. Okay. Um, also, another goal that you had indicated last year was to move in terms of the offshore work to about 36%, if I'm right, in terms of the ratio of work to be done. Um, have you reached that goal? Yeah, yeah of course. Think, and will that grow further? <coughs> Two things. Is, of course, here we mainly speak of India, but uh, we have some other vibrant uh, offshore platform. Uh, they don't have the scale, but, but we could grow Poland pretty well. Uh, we grew and we will grow further South America with Argentina. So there, are, it's a map of global delivery center. So uh, today I think uh, we are at thirty-eight percent, and I think it will grow further. I think I, I have said that we will pass the fifty percent mark sooner or later. Don't think it will be two thousand and eleven, but probably two thousand and twelve, two thousand and thirteen. Uh, uh, that's where the market is going. So uh, uh, the question is, how do we combine uh, uh, offshore workforce with the onshore intimacy? And I have a lot of respect for Indian uh, big player. We will be less Indian than them. I, we can't match that. So how can we compensate by showing more, more on-site intimacy with our customers. So we must play a, a different game, but at that game we will see offshore growth and Indian headcount growing fast. Sure. What kind of investments have you lined up for India? Are you looking at new greenfield facilities, new cities that you want to set up campuses? Two things. Uh, we grow uh, a little bit everywhere. For us, uh, we were very small in Chennai. We are growing rapidly there. F for the first time, we bought land there. So where we used to lease, we start to build. So uh, uh, because of the, the, the real estate market in India, but personally, I would say an IT service company should not be in the real estate business. But here, it makes sense, so we'll have to. Uh, we have also built some small BPO facility thing. We have uh, uh, developed and quite well a little uh, facility in a city uh, in the south of Bangalore. I think it's Salem. 
that has worked very well and I think we will replicate that experience. So smaller center into smaller city. So we all think of these uh, big cities like Bangalore, Mumbai or Chennai. I think the, the, the delivery map of India will be a little more complex with uh, uh, hubs and then smaller production center even in smaller cities. And how much investment have you lined up for this? Uh, frankly, I don't know. We discussed that. Um, it's a big amount, but I don't think I know it. So I will not improvise a figure. Sure. Paul, thank you so much for talking to NDTV. Thank you.